Washington, D.C. was a city under siege, not by an external enemy, but by its own political paralysis. Congress was a fractured institution, its chambers filled with a cacophony of discord. The election aftermath had left the legislative body in disarray, unable to function effectively. Partisan divides ran deep, and the controversial nature of the election had only exacerbated existing tensions. Senate Majority Leader Miriam Rhodes, a stalwart of the Democratic Party, tried to maintain order in the Senate. Across the Capitol, House Speaker Carlos Ramirez faced similar challenges, struggling to keep the House of Representatives from descending into chaos. Minority Leader Tom Anderson, a Republican with a reputation for pragmatism, found himself at odds with both his party and the opposition, trying to navigate the unprecedented political landscape. In the hallways and backrooms of Capitol Hill, deals were attempted, alliances forged and broken, as lawmakers desperately sought a way forward. The specter of secession loomed, whispered in hushed tones and hinted at in public statements, threatening the very fabric of the Union. As the federal government struggled to maintain control, reports began to surface of states refusing to recognize President Digby Bud Taraxia's authority. Governors and state legislators, fueled by a mixture of genuine concern and political opportunism, withheld cooperation with federal agencies, creating a patchwork of non-compliance. In California, Governor Alice Whitman held press conferences denouncing Taraxia's presidency as illegitimate, citing tyranny and a violation of states' rights. In Texas, rookie Governor Mark Jennings echoed these sentiments, calling for a special legislative session to debate the state's response. Secessionist rhetoric grew louder, with some state leaders openly advocating for independence. State legislatures were battlegrounds of their own. Heated debates over the legality and implications of secession unfolded, with constitutional experts and historians brought in to testify. Some argued secession was a legal recourse in the face of federal overreach, while others warned of economic disaster and potential military conflict. Back in Congress, the situation was no better. Legislative gridlock became the norm as factions within both the Senate and House clashed over how to respond to the growing crisis. Filibusters, walkouts, and dramatic confrontations marked the daily proceedings, leaving little room for productive dialogue. Within these factions, divisions emerged. Some members, seeing the chaos as an opportunity, pushed for a hardline stance against secession, calling for federal intervention. Others, more sympathetic to state grievances, advocated for negotiation and compromise, hoping to prevent further escalation. President Taraxia, meanwhile, saw an opportunity to consolidate his power. His administration issued a series of executive orders aimed at securing critical infrastructure and controlling communication networks. These actions, presented as measures for national security, were viewed by many as efforts to suppress dissent and strengthen his grip on the presidency. As the crisis deepened, foreign governments began to take notice. Diplomats from China, Russia, and the European Union reached out to both the federal government and secessionist states, offering support or mediation. The United States, once a beacon of stability, was now seen as a volatile entity whose future was uncertain. International media coverage amplified the crisis. Global news networks broadcast footage of riots, military movements, and political speeches, highlighting the fragility of the situation. Pundits and analysts debated the potential collapse of American democracy, with some speculating about the global ramifications. Taraxia's administration faced diplomatic challenges on multiple fronts. Efforts to maintain legitimacy and reassure allies were complicated by the narratives pushed by foreign adversaries. High-stakes diplomatic meetings added another layer of complexity to the already convoluted crisis. As weeks passed, tensions escalated. Secessionist states took concrete steps toward independence, forming alternative governmental structures and mobilizing militias. California and Texas led the charge, with other states considering similar actions. Protests and demonstrations erupted across the nation. In secessionist states, citizens took to the streets in support of independence, waving new flags and chanting slogans of freedom. In loyalist states, counter-protests called for unity and condemned the breakaway movements. Violent clashes became more frequent, illustrating the deep divisions within the country. In response, President Taraxia authorized the use of force to dismantle secessionist movements. 
federal troops were deployed to enforce law and order, leading to crackdowns and mass arrests. The administration's heavy-handed approach only fueled the fire, driving more states to consider secession as a viable option. In a final, desperate effort to save the Union, congressional leaders convened emergency sessions to negotiate a compromise. Proposals included constitutional amendments, power-sharing agreements, and federal concessions to the states. The stakes could not have been higher. Federal representatives and secessionist leaders engaged in tense negotiations, each side aware that the fate of the nation hung in the balance. The dialogues were fraught with tension as both sides struggled to find common ground. With the nation teetering on the brink, a pivotal congressional vote or a landmark agreement now loomed. The decision reached in these high-stakes negotiations would determine whether the United States remained united or splintered into fragmented entities. The nation stood at a crossroads, with its future hanging by only a thread.